Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 46 of Darwell20's Let's Play series, where we're continuing to play with Pneumaticraft, and I came up with what seems to be a pretty spiffy automation here. Uh, last episode we wrapped up with me trying to figure out a good way to automate uh, this stuff, this yeast from uh, Pneumaticraft, because it's an important way of getting biofuel. Uh, so biodiesel is made with uh, plant oil and ethanol. Uh, and ethanol from Pneumaticraft requires, I said ethanol from Pneumaticraft, buddy, uh, requires, uh, yeah, uh, yeast, right? So the way you make yeast is either very annoyingly in the thermopneumatic press. You need water, mushroom, and you have to keep the temperature between 30 and 60 degrees. Room temperature is 27 degrees, so... You need to give it a little bit heat, but not too much heat. So this would be extremely annoying to automate. Um, and also you get a very tiny amount of yeast culture. You only get 250 millibuckets for the one mushroom. So you're gonna need like four mushrooms. Another way to do it though, is by dropping sugar in water or in yeast and placing a water bucket next to the yeast and then it combines. And there's a quick note on here. The crafting check is done when water is placed, not when sugar is dropped. So you have to make sure that the sugar's already in the yeast source block before you place the water source block. Got it? Good. So last episode, we were playing a couple things. Came away, not entirely sure how I was gonna do this. Figured it out between episodes. So here, I'm gonna show you it working, and then we're gonna go build it downstairs so you can see it being built from scratch. Cause you know, sometimes I gotta play with a few things before I figure out a good way to do it. Um, so basically what I used is the constructor from refined storage in fluids mode set to place water when it's receiving a redstone signal. And then I have a destructor from refined storage in fluids mode set to only pick up yeast culture. And then I've got a basic fluid tank with yeast culture in it. And I've got an external storage filtering whitelist mode yeast culture. And then water over here also filtering whitelist mode water. Cool. So long story short, um, we're going to be able to have this guy place the water, but only when he's receiving a redstone signal from the item detector, which is looking in this area, including the source block for that. Sound cool? So check it out. I'm going to remove... Wow, well, that's not what I want to do. Yeah, you're still in 3x3 three three mode, aren't you? <laughs> Dire, please. Do that, 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 and that. And then you should be okay. It'll just clear out a little bit. Go away, yeast. Wow, yeast moves very slowly. Um, so I just need to place this guy back here. So you are going to be... I think you were... These, these sliders are a little bit rough, but that'll work. I think it needs to be a 2 on the Z. There you go. Sweet. Okay, so um, what's going to happen is when it detects any item entity, right, any item uh, in this area, it will remove, it will place the water source block over top of the flowing yeast block, right? Because that's a flowing source, like that's not actually a source block. So the constructor has no problem placing over it. So ready? Boom. See it work? And now we've got five buckets of yeast culture. How cool is that? That works beautifully. It's perfect. And here's an even better deal. You ready? I can do four at a time. Ready? Watch this. It looks like it wastes a little bit of water, but I'm okay with that. So we've got nine yeast culture. Maybe it doesn't waste water. No, it doesn't waste water. That's cool. Um... One problem is, is it, did, it does look like doing multiple at a time. Um, it may have continued placing. What was up with that? Let's see. It looks like it didn't detect, or it, it, it placed again a little bit quickly. So you might be a little bit too fast, Mr. Constructor. I don't think I can slow you down, though, can I? Mm, probably not. I, I know there's a speed upgrade, but I don't think there's a slow down upgrade. It's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, I, could, I could fix that, though. We could do something with, like, a timer. 
so that it can only place a water source block every so often. So we can use like a timer or something. So we'll solve that separately, right? But that is pretty cool, right? I think that's pretty awesome. So let's take that um, and rebuild it downstairs kind of from scratch, just so I can show you guys it being built because I did this off camera, obviously. And um, we'll go from there, fair? Beautiful. So I'm going to put away a few things I may not need exactly at this moment. Uh, I probably don't need you no more. Uh, and I don't need this many stone bricks. And I don't think I need my exchanging gadget at the moment. Oh, and I definitely don't need this fluid placer because he's not part of this operation anymore. Sorry, fluid placer. But I want more water for the time being. And I'll probably have another better way of getting water at some point. But I kind of want this all down here. So I cleared out a little bit more space. Um... Just have a little bit more room. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Um, so all we need to do is kind of like we had already, which is which makes life pretty easy. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this like maybe right inside this wall. Feels like a nice place for it. It's going to give me a little bit more space to operate in. So if we had, um, Let's do it so that we would, let's have these two be the, the, the source block locations, right? Okay, that should be cool. So that's gonna be your yeast bucket location. I'm gonna have my destructor here. Okay, uh, and then we're gonna have our constructor here. And you're allowed to place fluid mode water bucket. Just shift click it or click it into the thing and it'll show water, right? And you're allowed to destruct yeast, but make sure you're in fluid mode so you see the fluid, not the bucket of it, right? And let's make sure, so that's, this guy needs to be in whitelist mode. So it's like, you're allowed to place the yeast here, okay? Or break yeast here, destructor, remove, okay? Um, and then what we're probably gonna wanna have, the yeast culture is gonna make its way into this guy, ultimately. Um, is there a way for me to, You only want to transfer 400 mil buckets at a time, huh? Okay. Sweet. Now, do you also have to be between 30 and 60? Because that's bad times. Ethanol. Oh, you do. Brutal. That's rough. It's going to be rough to keep. I have to figure out how to do that a little bit better. Um, so you also don't need to have a heat thing. Let's, um, I'm probably gonna wanna swap these. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so you have the yeast culture, you're gonna go here, but you're not gonna get a heat pipe. And then you have the vegetable oil, you're gonna go here. Cool. And we'll just have to figure out a good way to keep that around 30 to 60 C. I'll figure it out in a minute. Let's continue with the yeast culture bit. So yeast culture bucket will go here. That's going to stay. Um, and then we're going to have a couple of external storages. Uh, one of them being you. And you're going to get boop, with some cables. And you're going to be a fluid whitelist. I need the yeast culture, so let me pick that source back up. You're gonna be yeast culture only, right? So whitelisted fluid, only yeast culture can go into here. Got it? Uh, and what I'm thinking is my water source, why don't I just hook that up in the room that has a water pump so we can keep that thing full at all times. Smart? I hope so, because that's basically what I'm doing. So if I popped you here uh, and we put our external storage here and we can set you to fluid mode, boom, cool. And I'll even like whitelist water on it. So you're only allowed to interact with water. And that, my friends, is about all there is to it. Once you figure out how to build the thing, it works pretty well. Um, should I get a fluid grid real quick? I feel like that would be cool. I feel like that would be cool. Yeah, this seems like a good idea. Almost there. 
No? Killing me, Smalls. There it is. Cool. And then you. Just so we can see what's in the network, right? So fluid grid, we'll pop that dude there. And then boom, we can see our latex, our liquid meat, and our water. Beautiful. That's pretty cool, right? I like that. All right, so then down here again, right? Um, so how should we want to do this? That's the question. But let's just test it real quick. So we're also going to want the item detector set up. Uh, we we'll want the constructor set to only work with redstone signal. Okay. We're going to want um, to connect you guys up here. And then how should we timer this? Um, what kind of timers do we have? I know we've got the can send out time to redstone pulses. Let's see. Counter inventory checker digit sensor sequencer. That might be what we want. Logic timer. Time to redstone pulses. Oh, good. There is the transmitter and receiver. Good. Wireless is here. For a minute there, I was wondering if it like didn't exist anymore. Um, so I think timer we should try out. Seems smart. And we might want a sequencer. I think that might be something we want to investigate. Let's start with timer and see what we get. All right? So you will just pulse. Pause when redstone active. Okay. Okay. So we kind of want the reverse of that. But that's okay. So I guess the question would be, will the pulse that this generates be sufficient to trigger the constructor every time? Because we want it to work every time. Sometimes pulses are too quick and machines don't recognize them fast enough and they will sometimes fire, right? So it'll be like pulse, you have like, a, it might work, it might not. That would be bad. That would be bad if that was the case. So we don't want to allow that to be the, the situation that we find ourselves in. So we want to be a little bit careful about that. Um, so we want to test this out a little bit. So let's have our timer. Now sequencer, remind me. Oh, yeah, I remember this. Oh, yeah, I remember this. This might work. This might work. Sequencers are pretty complex, but this might work. Um, oh. That's neat. I think that's new. When a redstone signal is received, loop the cycle once. Ignore further pulses. No. Uh, when a redstone signal is received, loop the cycle once. Restart if no. No. Loop the cycle all the time. Ignore redstone pulses. No. Loop the cycle all the time. Restart a redstone pulse. No. Loop the cycle when redstone signal is present. Continue at current step. No. Loop the cycle when redstone is present. Restart on no signal. Yes. Okay, so check this out. What this is, is there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight grids in this box, okay? With the delay set to one and the sequence length set to 64, it's going to step through each one of these and every game tick, which remember there's 20 ticks in a second, so every 20th of a second, it will execute one of these steps, either redstone signal off or redstone signal on, okay? So if it's redstone signal on, in that tick, it'll execute the, uh, or it'll, it'll emit a redstone signal. So what we would probably want, um, 64 ticks sounds about right. So that's three seconds, a little bit more than three seconds. So let's say we want it, it on for one, two, three, four, five, right? So that's a quarter of a second, okay? So you're going to emit for a quarter of a second and then be off for about three seconds. And that seems good to me, but only when receiving a redstone signal. Okay, you ready? So when I give you a redstone signal, you'll be on for a quarter of a second and then off for a little bit. See? And you can see what step it's on up there. That works pretty well, I think. And as long as that's long enough to consistently place water, 
but not place too much water, I think will be cool. Good deal? So let's test this out by dropping, like, you know, let's do the four again like we had before. So if I remove you, okay, and we're gonna break this, and what I'm gonna do here is place this dude here, and you're going to check in a one by one radius. I might want, now nah, you're gonna, I need you to go in that direction. So that is facing X. So I want X to be plus one. That should be cool, right? So then we want like that. Okay, so watch what happens when I remove this. Okay, he placed that because there was a block there, but that's, you know, that's that's to be expected. All right, that was placed because there was a block there, but that's, you know, that's okay. Uh, so drop you guys, place. All right, my magnet's on. Haha, <laughs> magnet's off. Place. Cool. That timing actually works out pretty well. That timing seems like it works out really well, actually. Why are you still on and not placing water? Oh, there you go, okay. So the water might, the timing may not be perfect. The timing may not be perfect. I think we need more, more timing here. So let's make this, how about 10, so that's half a second. And we'll see if that's long enough to consistently place the water. Okay. This is this is the trial and error that has to happen sometimes. Not consistent still. See how it's pulsing and it's not placing? Though that's not the end of the world, to be fair, because it'll eventually place, right? So it just means crafting's a little bit slower, and that's not terrible. The important thing is that we don't get a double place, because if there's, there's if there's already water there when the sugar hits the water, it will break the entire system. So as long as it's not placing water when it's not supposed to, I think we're in good shape. So I might leave this as is. This looks like a good setup to me, and that gives us a healthy amount of yeast culture. So I'm down. All right, I'm playing around with the plant to figure out like how I can keep this guy at the right temperature. So if I remove one, is he going to drop below 30? He does. Bummer. What if I do this, get him to where I want him to be? And then do that. Now is he going to lose temperature or does he maintain it? Because he's He's not exposed to any air. So will he maintain this temperature? Because that would be kind of cool. All right. I thought I was I was concerned it might actually use up uh, some heat, right? Um, but as long as he doesn't use heat to do this operation, then we don't need to worry too much about it. And that's cool. That's cool. That's pretty neat. All right. So ethanol, I said I was getting 50 millibuckets was the best from sugar, right? Uh, yeah, that's that's kind of your best bet there. All right, I'm down. That's pretty cool. Actually, he's gaining temperature by doing this operation, which is funny. It's a little bit funny. We're going to have to babysit this a little bit. So it does look like when this thing's processing, it slowly generates heat. I'm a little bit worried about that. Uh, but we'll have to babysit it a little. We're going to see what happens. But let's move on and figure out how to make... Biofuel. So I think I'm going to use XNet for this bad boy. So what I'm going to do is set up an XNet controller back here. Okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll connect to these dudes like so. You ready? Uh, so first off, you need power. So I got myself a flux point here ready to go. Boop. Power for you. Uh, and you're going to need a connector here. here and then a cable 
and then a connector. Cool? And that should be groovy. So he lost a little temperature as a result of me breaking that block and replacing it. I could set up like a timer to break and replace the block every so often, and that might work, but it only generates heat when it's actually processing. So that's gonna be really tricky to automate. That may not be even possible. The only thing I can think of that might be able to manage that is integrated dynamics. Unless there's some kind of redstone control where it'll emit a signal based on how hot it is. I have no idea if that's a thing. Um, but otherwise automating that might be harder than it sounds. And it sounds pretty hard. So anyway, we'll have to figure it out. So uh, what we're gonna wanna do probably is have a couple more buckets. Okay. And if we remember correctly, our goals here, right, that we started a million years ago, was to be able to make lubricant, and that is redstone plus biodiesel, or plastic, which is coal plus biodiesel, okay? So basically, no matter what, we want biodiesel to get into this dude here, right? We definitely want biodiesel in him. So that's kind of the main, the main crux of what we're working towards. Okay, so what we want to do is be ready to get each fluid type and handle it. So there's ethanol. There's vegetable oil. Okay, and what we're going to say is that we're going to have a fluids channel here. Create. And now you are over there. That's not the one I want. You are that guy. Let's start with this one. Okay you are going to extract ethanol, okay? So you are going to, and let's take this channel here, enable processing. I'm gonna turn off processing on the entire channel because I don't want anything flown around by mistake, okay? Uh, you're going to extract, uh, filter would be ethanol, hopefully that works. Uh, and that's fine. And then the mixer is going to insert. Ethanol. Does that sound cool? Yes, beautiful. Okay, cool. I'm gonna do this on multiple channels. Kinda could probably do it all on one. Um, ish. But because I really want to make sure I'm super filtering and there's only one filter slot, I'm going to do it on separate, right? So here we'll do another fluid channel, create. I'm not going to allow processing yet, but then this guy will be an extract of vegetable oil. And this guy will be an insert, right, of vegetable oil. And then when we turn that on, he starts operating, beautiful. And he's going to make ethanol for us. Or biodiesel, I mean. Sweet. Wow, he makes a small amount of biodiesel. Uh, I think it's 25 per operation, though, right? Yeah, so he, he does pretty good. He just takes a minute. But there's, I presume, speed upgrades is a thing. Dispenser. Volume. Security. Oh, maybe not. Okay. Uh, we're also going to have to get these drops of glycerol, which are nice for speed upgrades. That's pretty cool. So yeah, we should we should extract the items from this guy. We'll handle that in a minute. Um, what we could have is like a drawer. That sound cool? I like the sound of that. I like the sound of a drawer. And we could probably just pop this dude here. And let's get a few more of these. I mean, I only need the one, but we'll have them for later because I feel like we're going to be doing a little bit more XNet in the future, right? So we'll have channel eight be the item energy or the item one. Create, and then you're going to insert on this guy. You're going to extract from this guy. So you're going to extract and you're going to insert. And that's all she wrote. Boom. And then we can lock him. Nice. And that looks groovy to me. Sweet. So all I want to do now is get a bucket of biodiesel so that I have it for the filter. Um, but what we're gonna set up here 
is another fluid channel, create. Uh, we're gonna disable it for a minute, but you're gonna extract from this dude, okay? Uh, and what you're gonna extract is biodiesel, which we'll have in the next iteration. Boom. Less bad for the environment. I know, but less easy to automate. <coughs> <coughs> Um, and you're going to insert into, so you're going to extract filter biodiesel and you're going to insert into this guy biodiesel. And then we can turn on the channel and all our biodiesel should be disappearing from here and making its way over to here. And there's your biodiesel. Nice. So that's biodiesel automated. That's ethanol taken care of. And now we can get lubricant and plastic. So plastic. 100 millibuckets turns into one bucket. So plastic we'll get a lot of. Lubricant, a little less. Uh, it's, all, it's one bucket to one bucket. So not terrible, um, you know, ratios. Plastic, a lot easier, uh, you know, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, now the only problem, like I said, is you. So you might become a problem at some point. Um, what I do want to think about doing, what I do want to think about doing is maybe moving this dude Right, so your external storage, and you, do we still have a bucket of you? I may not, let's get a bucket. And you know what it would be smart to do? Always keep a bucket of this, just in case, because it's a little bit annoying to make. I mean, not terrible, but a little bit. What if we moved this guy up to here? Okay, um, how, about, how about right here? Would that be cool? Mm, maybe here. Yeah, I like that a little bit better, right? So you can be external storage. You're gonna be fluids. You're gonna be whitelist. You're gonna be yeast culture. Okay, we're gonna connect you back up. Boom. And then we just have to automate the whole dropping sugar thing, right? But if we had three sugar that we dropped right there. Magnet off, please. And we can set this up with like a, a crafting mechanic. So you, you did bad. Maybe I should make these, you know what I should do? This gives me a second to pick up the item. Because this is restart on no signal. Yeah, I like that plan. See, so now it won't do that. Uh, clever, right? That's kind of cool. I think that works, right? Doesn't that work? That really works, actually. That works even better than before. I think that's. I think that's what's up. Uh, so then you, buddy. Can go there and there. Okay. And then you need to go into the first thermo pneumatic. This guy needs yeast, right? So we'll make a new. Fluid channel create, turn you off for a second. So you're gonna extract from here, yeast culture buckets, okay? And then you're gonna insert into this guy, the bottom one, yeast culture buckets and activate. And then you're draining and you're filling. Sweet, I like it. I like it, I quite a bit like it. Um, maybe another thing we could do, if this sounds cool, what if we had an interface? Okay. And we had a crafting card. Okay. You with me? And we said, hey, interface with crafting card, keep, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't need that timer no more, I don't need you no more.
See where I'm going with this, I hope? Okay, let's try that again, now that we actually have sugar cane. Shh, why are this crafting good out of power? I can solve that. Whoop. So sugar cane, 10, 10, 10, 10. We'll do that, and then this, and then that. And he'll auto craft the sugar for me once I connect you up to a cable. Cool. So you will keep 10 sugar in there at all times. Neat, okay? So then what we do is we say, you, buddy, are going to, was this the items channel? Yes. So what we're gonna want is give me some sugar. Boop. And you're going to say on the items channel, right? That was this guy. Uh, you're going to extract from the interface sugar on whitelist mode, okay? One sugar at a time should be good. And then you're gonna insert into this dude, okay? And we're gonna put sugar in there. Aha! Cool? How cool is that? All right, now my only concern, like I said, is the temperature, because this temperature keeps going up. So the more operating this does, the hotter it gets. That's gonna be a little bit of a problem that I need to figure out, but this should keep things going pretty well. Now, the only other thing we have to do is automate yeast. So what we could do, what we could do is one more thing we'll do, which is to have a dropper, okay? Uh, I like precise dropper, drop without randomness. Yes, please. Precise dropper. I need to, I need to auto craft these cause they are, they are a thing. So we want you to go like this, right? Can I rotate you with a wrench? Let's use the hammer. He's usually a pretty good rotator. Why you be this? Why you like to be like this? Why do you need to be like this? I want you to, you know what? Can't I control him? Uh, count one, offset one, delay, preview. Yes, I want you to always drop there. So why don't we put you right here in this source, in this spot? That sound cool? Like that. Okay, so uh, he does need RF. We don't super have RF here, but we can make RF be a thing with another flux point. Dial Funnies network. Okay, now you got powers. Delay, I guess that's how long, it, how frequently it's allowed to drop. I like that. Let's make you every two seconds you, you can drop an item. The slider is a little bit tricky. Oh good, arrow keys work. <laughs> it even says on the tooltip, arrow keys, hold shift or alt, got it. Um, so offset zero, count one, requires redstone, yes, requires redstone. So if I put sugar in there, right, watch what happens when I give you a redstone signal. Except for the magneting part. <laughs> uh, magnet off, give you redstone signal. Are you going back into my inventory or something? Like what's happening here? There we go. Cool. So do that. That seems reliable, right? All right, so what I'm gonna do, you ready for this part now? This should be the cool part. This should be the cool part. Um, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have a crafting card, keep this thing full at all times with sugar. Okay, so you come here and you're going to craft sugar. Okay, cool. 
So you're going to keep sugar in there. But remember, he only runs on a redstone signal. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a detector here. And you are going to be a fluid type detector for yeast. And you're going to emit a signal when under 6,000 buckets, millibuckets, right? So six buckets of yeast. So when we have less than six buckets of yeast, emit a redstone signal. And you're kept sugar. So when I connect you, watch what happens. Signal on, sugar drops. This guy starts doing his thing. He may not be placing more reliably enough, so let's bump you up to like a full second. Maybe I don't want you to drop as fast. Let's go every five seconds you're allowed to drop an item. Is that cool? I'm just picking this stuff up real quick. Put the sugar back. All right, cool. So every five seconds you can drop an item and that should be good. So now if we come up here, once we hit four buckets of yeast, his red or six buckets, his redstone signal should go off. You ready? 5.8. 6.8. Redstone signal off. No more dropping sugar. Boom. How cool is that? How cool is that? Huh? Huh? I like it. Right? Isn't that cool? Right? And then as we use up the yeast, okay, it'll... It'll go below six buckets, it'll turn on the redstone signal, it'll drop a sugar, it'll make another bucket, and then it'll turn off the redstone signal. How's that? So my only problem is you and being hot. Yeah, I have to solve that. All right, let's wrap up the episode here. I will think about how to solve this, because that's a tricky problem. Uh, and come back next episode to see if we came up with a solution, because I have no idea, no idea what to do about this, none. Uh, but for now, Dollatoy signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, that's some really good automation right there. I'm pretty pleased with how well that should all work out. And then you have lots of biodiesel for me, which is also cool. So I'm going to keep this thing running for a little bit. We'll come back next time uh, and continue to play. For now, Double 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. I should also make this thing put seeds in. Yeah, I should do that too. I'm going to set that up off camera, but you get the idea of what I'm going to do here, right? Simple, straightforward. Oops, wrong thing. We'll just do... 10 seeds should be good to keep in stock. Yeah, that should be fine. Perfect. All right. Uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. We'll come back next time. For now, take it easy.